Welcome back and last time you may remember I was uh, working on these uh, little um, boxes for the pin locks and now I've switched over to the 3 16 inch uh, end mill there to uh, cut out these notches because I drilled the holes last time so I've got that there with a little bit of uh, lubricant on there a little bit of oil I think I was running on there and um, actually I think it was WD-40 I was using and there's the first two that I've done so there was only um, 12 more to go and meanwhile, uh, Zach's pretty much been busy on this one and got it done, so it's all waxed up now. And the next step for this one, and this is the leading edge um, spar for the four plane, the next step up is to get the uh, rubber profile on there. And these are the remaining test coupons from those tests from uh, last time. So as you can see, that was the first one, and this is the second one. And uh, Jeff's written on there when they failed. And this one was a thousand pounds. So there was a little bit of variation in there, but still way more than what Mark was expecting. And then uh, the last one there, you can just see in the top, this is just with a clear opening and not any sort of right angle on there. And you can see where they all failed at. And uh, so Mark was super happy with that. And just uh, so you know, it was basically a layup there, nine ninety thousandths thick, which in our world is basically three of our heavy plies that we lay up there. So that worked out well and uh, everything's really good with those results. So further along here, I've got the notch uh, drilled out or cut out and then these two larger holes also I use the 3 16 inch mill just to run a little circular path around there to cut those out. And so I've done um, most of those ones with that now. And uh, next thing up was uh, using the reamer um, to make the hole nice and smooth because I undercut them on the machine and then come back with the reamer and actually just do a nice job because we've got a, a little bearing sleeve um, sort of you'll see it's a little stainless sleeve that we had made a while ago that goes in there for the pin to ride in so if there's any wear in the lock you can just replace the little sleeve um, anyway so through there with the uh, reaming bit to make sure that that uh, hole is nice and smooth and so the, that one hole there that one is the larger one I believe it was nine sixteenths and the other one on the other side is only half inch because only one side is uh, is getting the little uh, sleeve insert so start off and do this one and I just wanted to show people you know how much work is involved in doing all these locks and this is why we don't really want to have to do it for production there's a much simpler way with fewer locks and there's the little sleeve that we had done a while back I had machined by um, a third party shop and uh, so that's a little stainless sleeve I believe is what we got can't remember now it's been a long time ago that we got that anyway so that basically slides in from underneath and now that the hole is reamed it's a it's just a snug fit it needs to be sort of pressed in um, but this is what it looks like when it pressed in. I just pressed, pressed it in with a pair of pliers. It wasn't that difficult. And now I'm coming back through with the half inch bit and actually going to ream that as well. So we have a really smooth fit even inside that. And the reamer is going to go all the way through to the bottom hole as well. So the pin will actually slide in that one insert and then through to the other side with a nice smooth action that's uh, you know being facilitated by running the reamer all the way through. But as you can see, again, a lot of work. And you need to multiply that by 14 for every aircraft. So this is why I really want to go with a clamshell door that only really would probably only have two, maybe three locks at most. And the rest just two hinges on the top and two on the bottom. So anyway, there you can see I run the reamer all the way through to the bottom and just running up and down a few times to make it nice and smooth. And finally, there's our Loctite that we have um, in a little tube that it came or a little container. And there's the sleeve in there inserted. And so the last thing to do is just put a drop of, um, of Loctite in there and it sort of um, will just find its way around the um, around the edge there so it's a bit difficult to do that and uh, hold my phone or camera at the same time and show you but anyway um, trust me I put a drop of uh, lubricant in there and this is what it looks like when it's in there so you can see it sort of settling around there and that'll hold it into place I mean it was a press fit it's not really going to fall out but this way it's sort of locked into place now so those are all done now and uh, the next step is um, to get the little internal bits uh, welded up and that's what I'm waiting on uh, for Brit to actually do and this is kind of what the finished product looks like now so you've got the little smaller hole there on the one side and the other holes that are uh, for mounting and then that hole in the middle there on the left that's to actually put the little pin through that is going to hold the internals um, around this actual little slide pin here where you can see the little hole in that pin Anyway, so that slides in there now, and the idea is that it's nice and smooth action without any sort of um, resistance or friction, but at the same time you don't want any play in there at all, and, and they're, they're all running really smoothly in there. It's uh, 
a real nice fit and that's actually I think this is one of the ones that I hadn't done a finish reaming on but the uh, the action is just super nice and it looks actually like a kind of like a safe vault uh, lock there which is kind of neat and there's all 14 of them sitting in a box and that was basically one day's work for me um, anyway a lot of work and meanwhile on the other side of the shop uh, Jeff has been working on this uh, in conjunction with Zach so they got it sanded and then um, primed the first go around and then the guide coat put on there and ready for a little bit of detail work so here Jeff's been working on the little problem areas that were a little tricky to get nice and smooth with the uh, machine when I was when I was cutting it cutting the putty um, so that one is getting close to being ready for the second uh, round of primer already and meanwhile uh, my next task was to get these uh, side stick mounts uh, mounted into the fuselage and you see I've just got them Clico back in place and I've got the dash back in there because everything has to line up with the lower dash as you can see the side stick sort of comes out of there so you'll see more on that in a minute and uh, meanwhile Zach's gone and got the um, the rubber profile put on uh, this um, four plane uh, leading edge spar plug so that one is now ready for a mold and here's the other one this is the main spar uh, for the four plane and Zach's been up on up and down on the table standing on that because we didn't have another place to put it and that one's getting close to being ready for the first round of uh, primer and here's Jeff actually starting to do the layups for these um, hard points for the, the door hook locks that are live inside the bottom of the fuselage there and you can see he's putting a bunch of different layers down there wetting them down rolling them out um, just to get the right amount of resin sort of in there and here he is laying the first one up so he's taking that bit of foam um, that hardcore foam that I did a while ago and he's wrapped that inside of um, this carbon fiber layup so it's, it kind of goes up over the top and around the outside edge there and then he's uh, laying it in there and then so he's got six of those to do and this is the first three done with some peel ply on there and the next step on that will be to, to build up some more foam for the opening for where the actual hook lives when it uh, um, actuates and then we'll be laying up over the top of that but that'll be next week and standing on the other side of the fuselage this is the other angle there with the first, first three done so you can see the kind of uh, flat face there that sort of uh, parallels the edges of the fuselage and here Zach is uh, working on getting this one finished so it's now had the second coat of primer on there and guide coat and after he finishes sanding that uh, it'll be ready for waxing and also related to the door locks uh, I needed to create some backing plates um, that have little nut plates on them for, in other words for the, a, a place for the bolts that go through the door locks to hold them um, so they have uh, somewhere to sort of um, bolt up to and you'll see more on that later but again more work with this so this is drilling a whole bunch of things that are going to be cut out there later on and finally uh, here's the side stick so bonded into place or at least those brackets there bonded into place the Clico is still just holding them uh, while the bonding sets up and the action is like buttery smooth in there it's just I mean it's super nice so I'm happy with the alignment there because it's aligning through not only those two things but also through the bottom of the dash there so three different places that chances for locking up but anyway that's our update for this week and um, there'll be more fun and action happening next week so thanks again for watching